Hello again and welcome back. So now that we have the spell data table and all that all that jazz. Oh, let me get rid of all this. So now that we have all that set up, let's set up the actual spell book itself. So I'm going to go into my HUD elements. I'm going to right click and under user interface, I'm going to add a widget blueprint. This will be my spell book underscore W. So I'm going to open that up. Oh, I don't know why it does that sometimes. And then I'm going to, yeah. All right, so the first thing I like to do with widgets is I go to the canvas panel, right click, and I'm going to wrap this with a scale box and a size box. So you can set this to whatever kind of width and height override you like, but this makes sure that no matter what device it's played on, it scales and stretches appropriately according to this. So I set mine to 1920 by 1080, but you can do anything that's a 16 by 9 that fits that. So with that done, I'm going to go up into my search palette and grab another canvas panel and drop it right onto that first one. Now with the second one selected, I'm going to anchor it to the center left, set its position to zero, and on the alignment, I'm going to, let's see, is it 0.1? No, negative 0.1 on the X, and for the Y, 0.5. So this will scoot it to the right just a little bit, and this centers it up right in the middle. Now I'm going to have my buttons be about five or a hundred no 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 I'm gonna do 75 this time because the hundred was too big. So basically when you're establishing the size and of your box you need to take into consideration the size of your buttons. I'm going to set this up to be it'll be just like our inventory so five across and then it'll go down to the next row. The where, where it's going to be different from our inventory is we're just going to add each one as we get it instead of having just a bunch of buttons already. We'll add them each as we get to them. So since I'm doing 75 and and I suck at math I'm just gonna do this range. It's probably something super simple. 375. I should have known that. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's gonna be 375 plus each one is going to have about five units in between. So 20. So 400. 400 on the X, and then I'll do 500 on the Y. So this is gonna be my spell book. So for this, I'm also going to add an image onto that canvas panel that I parent to the full screen and set it like that for the offset so that it stretches and scales. And I'm just going to set its color and opacity. I'm going to set it to black. And then for the alpha, which is basically how transparent it is, it's 0.5. Now you can do all kinds of stuff. Like you can add, uh, you can stretch it up above it just a little bit and then put a text but, well, let's just do that. I'll show you. So I'm going to anchor that to the center, set its position to one, and it's so this will put it above that anchor. And then zero it out. Now for this one, I want its justification to be centered. Oh, wait. Let's see, it's 151 on the X, so yeah, about negative 75. Well, actually, no, pff, I'm stupid. We can just do 0.5 on the X. Duh. And then I'm just going to set it to be Spellbook. And then you can just kind of customize the spacing on it. Ooh, that's too much. That looks all right. So now back on the canvas panel, I am going to add a uniform grid panel to the second canvas panel that is also going to be anchored to the full thing, just like that. And then I'm going to set its name to be spell grid. And you want to make sure that it is set to a variable so that we can actually 
access it, clear the children out with blueprints, etc. So with all that done, I'm going to compile and come back out to my content browser. So just like we did with the menu, now we'll need a menu icon, but for the spell book. So I'm going to go to user interface and another widget blueprint called spell book icon underscore w. And I'm going to open that up. And now this one, I don't want to use this full sized thing. So right up here on fill screen, we want desired on screen. So this, whoa, it's gone. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so this will let us, whatever we put inside the canvas panel will be, you know, it'll, it'll stretch to that. So I'm going to add a button to the canvas panel. We don't need to wrap it because it'll be fed into the other one that it'll be, that it'll be wrapped. So for the button, I'm going to set its scale to size to 75 by 75. And you'll see that the, the canvas panel kind of stretches accordingly. So that's working good. This is going to be spell button. It's automatically a variable. And I'm going to drag out a text block. Let's see the justification. I want it centered. And I'm going to set its size to like five. And the typeface to light. Just to make it look a little bit better. So for the button, we want to uh, go into the graph, get rid of the pre-construct and the event tick, and on, we want to add a variable. And this is going to be the spell info. That'll be the structure that we set up in the previous episode. So spell info. And now we want to drag out our button, get it, and then we want to set style. So from here, we want to drag off the style. We want to make the button style. That'll get you this handy little node. So I'm going to drag out my spell info structure and break it open. And then from the normal on the make button style, we want to drag off and make a slate brush because we can't plug that spell image directly in. It has to be fed through here. So spell image, I'm going to feed that into the image. I'm going to connect the slate brush to the normal and the pressed. And from the hovered, I'm going to drag off and make another slate brush. Drop it down because we want this one to have a tint. So I'll hook that same spell image up right there, but from tint I'm going to drag off and you'll see make slate color. This will let you add a color overlay to the button when it's being hovered over. So for the specified color for mine, I'm just going to set this to white and then 0.1. That way it's got a nice gray color whenever you click over it. So now, oh, back over in the designer for a second because one thing I forgot is we need to highlight our text make sure it's a variable and I'm gonna name that spell name I thought about that at first and then I was like wait no I don't have to do that and then no it turns out yeah I do <laughs> so I'm gonna get that spell name and we want to drag off and set the text it's the very bottom one set text parentheses text so I'm gonna hook that just like that and then I am going to Drag all this down just a little bit. I'm going to drag off the, sp not the spell net type, the spell name. And just like we did for the row name, we need to convert it to a string. Uh, enum to string. And then the string can be fed into the text. So now we need to uh, set up our ability to get this spell book on screen. I'm going to set that font real quick too, just to light, make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to go into edit and for project settings because the first thing we need to do is establish an input. But I'm going to save real quick because it kind of hiccuped and I'm kind of worried that it was going to crash for a second. So under engine, under input, 
we need to add a new action mapping called spell spellbok bok choy spellbook and for the key I'm going to use k you can set it to whatever you like but with that done I'm going to go to my player right click and edit so inside the event graph we want to find some empty space I'm going to right click and then call that spellbook function there's a couple things you want to check first so I don't want them to be able to open the spellbook if the menu is already open because then that'll it'll clash so I'm going to add a branch I'm going to find my oh, we got a lot of functions don't we I'm going to find my menu open boolean and hook it up just like that so if the menu is not open then I want to find out if the spellbook is open so I'm going to add a variable of a boolean called spell book open question mark I'm going to add a branch and from our false node so the menu is not open we're going to check to see if the spell book is open and if false then we want to create widget the widget that we want to create is our spell book not the icon but the book itself and I am going to promote this to a variable called spell book underscore w then I'm going to oop, all right, add to viewport oh I'm gonna move this over a little bit because we need to do now that we have that variable we need to do one more check so I'm gonna check to see if it is valid and right here you'll see one that has a question mark determines if an object is valid that's the one we want so from our false I'm gonna hook that up to this executable I'm gonna grab my spellbook widget variable that we just made and then hook it up and if it is not valid then we want to create it but if it is already valid we want to just go ahead and add it to viewport we don't want to create because this will just create it and then hide it create it hide it and then you'll have a stack of them hidden in the background you don't want that so you just want it to create one time if it's already there you want to just put it right back on the viewport so once it is open we want to get a player controller this will let us add, uh, access our input functions. So from the get player controller, we want to drag off and get you know, set input mode. Now you want game and UI. This will let you click on UI interface and also access keyboard functionality so that if we need to, we can close our widget. I'm going to drag that down a little bit and I'm going to hook my spell book right up there into it and widget to focus. Now another thing we want to do is from the get player controller we want to set show mouse cursor and we are going to set that to true so that we can actually see the mouse when we bring it up then we want to set that our spell book is now open so boom one more thing that I like to do but you don't have to do uh, I'm going to right click and then set global time dilation just because um, I like it to slow down so that if you're, if you're in combat you have a little bit of extra time to kind of poo -poo determine your next spell so I'm going to set the global time dilation to quarter speed so the way the time dilation works is from 0 to 1 is basically 0 is frozen 1 is full speed so this 0.25 quarter speed so now that we have all this done let's go over to the true side so now we've got the if the spell book is closed we need can open it but if it's open then we need to close it so if it's open then this will be valid so we can remove from parent and then basically we just need to undo everything we just did so I'm going to get another copy of the player controller I'm going to set my input mode back to game only so that we're just running around like normal when the game first starts I want to set show mouse cursor to false 
so that it hides our little mouse cursor again. I'm going to set that the spell book is no longer open. And then I'm going to set the global time dilation back to full speed. Or, oop, one. So now if we hop in and take a quick look, got my spell book, everything slows down, I can put it away. Now you'll notice I don't have any spells in there yet, but that's because I don't really have any spells anyway. So uh, in the next one we'll actually, because I'm going to try to keep these videos a little bit shorter, we're already at 15 minutes, so I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter so that they're easier to digest and get to the points y'all need, um, which, is, which is why I'm sorry I've been talking so fast, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get as much of this out there and as quickly as y'all can and hopefully it's coming out okay. Um, but in the next one, we'll actually set up all the uh, stuff inside here to start filling this with the buttons. And then we'll actually go over the, the learning ability of the spells. So, all right. So that's it for this one. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, I keep forgetting to say it. Save. Save often. Save regular. Save. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.